happy 4th of July, right? Even right. though it's kind of over from huh. Terry and Emmy here at D-Lab. I've got a project, but we haven't seen Emmy in a long time, so I just want to do a little catch up with her. So what have you been doing? So, I've been at my aunt's house, who is an hour away. I usually go there only one week every summer, but this time I only, I went for two weeks. Mm -hmm. Don't remember why. I think it was just because. And but you were on Lake Michigan, right? Yes, she lives yeah. like five minutes away. Cool. And I went to the beach every two days. Cool, cool. And usually my cousins didn't come. You don't see much of a tan. I know, I put a lot of sunscreen on. Yeah, that's a good thing. Because you're light-skinned anyway, so it's not a good deal, right? Right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Sensitive. So you know what I've been doing? Working! It sounds <laughs> fun. Yeah, it is. It's great. And it, as a matter of fact, I have a new project. And I'm sure Emmy would just be thrilled to know what I'm building. Because she just loves this crap, right, buddy? Got, like, transformers, chassis, right? So Grandpa does. So what I'm building... You power boxes, right? Power box. Yes. This whole thing, actually, is going to be a power box for a Heathkit preamp that was built, like, back in the early 60s. So Heathkit made this one called the WAP2. Okay, it's like CP3O. What's that off of? Forget it. Okay, so anyway, I'm building a power supply for the Heathkit WAP2. The fellow has one, but Heathkit back then didn't put the actual power supply in the preamp. So if you didn't run it with one of their amps, you're out of luck. So D Lab is here to take care of that issue, right? Sure. Sure, with any support, as usual. Great. Okay, here we go. Well, here it is, the makings of the power box for a WAP2 Heathkit preamplifier. So I'm going to build it on this Hammond chassis. I've got an old Stancor P8173 power transformer. This is a little 4 Henry choke. Okay, so they're going to sit like that. And over here, and have the octal socket and this is where he'll plug in his preamp to get the power out of the power box okay I do not have the preamp here but there's enough information online for me to build this should be plug and go for the guy so first thing I need to drill all these holes get things mounted get the socket installed and we'll do a test using some dummy load resistors all right, so I've got the layout complete. Now it's time for me to move on to the soldering phase. But what do we got? Hi, this video is sponsored by my favorite group ever, Motion Device. I really love their songs. All right, so I've got the terminal boards mounted, but I'm afraid that my lightweight soldering iron can't do the job. So what do I do? <laughs> Use Snozzeramus! Snozzeramus! He hasn't been out. Good evening. Sit back, relax, light up an old ghoul. Feel the heat of Snozzeramus! A lot of people wonder where ghouls come from. Well, they come from all over. They have... A lot of ghouls come from Portugal. <laughs> Alright, so I've got the power supply all wired up, or the power box <laughs> um, anyway getting ready to check it out remember this is going to plug into that Heathkit preamp which I don't have but I believe that the owner is actually going to send one out to me so on top all you have is the power transformer and choke right bottom side point to point wired I did add this 10k resistor which currently is not on my schematic I did that because I noticed the voltage was a little bit too high on the output. So to test it, since I don't have the preamp, I made the magic adapter. What do you think of that, huh? <laughs> little light bulb up there. Pretty cool. So the light bulb... The radio would... obviously has an idea. The radio. Power box. Power <laughs> box, okay. Yeah, so this little light bulb is going to simulate the little tubes. So this, this will be the load for the filaments you know that heat the tube up and this little resistor is to load the high voltage I know this is good stuff right and then this little jumper 
That is to take place of the power switch that is normally on the preamp. So I'm just going to take this, plug it in to the octal socket. Okay. I'm not going to put it in all the way, just enough to make contact. We're going to fire it up. You need to measure the voltage here, make sure we're somewhere around 300. We should see this light come on, and then this little uh, yellow light here. That's the idiot light, right? Right? Is it on? Well, I don't know. Is the light on? Is it on? Get it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Let's power it up. All right. Let's take a quick look at the construction of the little power supply for the Heathkit preamp. So I took this information from a Dynaco model PS1 power supply. They also made little preamps that did not have their own standalone supply inside. They actually pulled it from the power amps. So there's a lot of these nice little preamps out there that don't have a power supply. So this is an easy method for you to construct one, right? Very simple. You've got the Stancor power transformer. It's diode rectified. In this case, I added a choke, all right? That was not in their design, but I thought, well, it's a preamp, so you want it as clean as possible. I also added a 10K resistor that steps the voltage down, assuming approximately six to seven milliamps of current. So that was kind of a guess, okay? But it's at least gonna knock the voltage down from about 360 down to around 325 to feed the preamp. I also added a little indicator lamp because the Stancor power transformer had a low current six volt winding. So I thought we might as well utilize that. It's fuse protected, and also you'll see that I only used a two conductor power cord. And you may think, hey, why didn't you use a grounded power cord? Well, this old audio gear did not have grounds, okay? So if I were to have grounded this chassis and he plugged it into an ungrounded amplifier, it could have caused a loop, right? Resulting in noise. So I did not do that. This DC power supply is using this chassis as common ground. And if you follow that out, it goes to pin three of the octo plug that goes into more filtering and resistors inside of the preamp, okay? So this one was designed around Heathkit specs for that octo plug. If you had a different preamp, the pinout would probably be different. I got the little plug installed right so we've got a little resistor there we're going to monitor that with a meter now be careful because there's going to be like 300 volts so don't put your tongue on it <laughs> and then that light should illuminate when i plug this in okay here we go that light's on idiot light on over there yeah no is it on i don't know is it on is it yellow is it on it's, it's yellow. okay and we got about 325 volts okay so I am guessing at this point for the current draw, oh, but I think I'm pretty close. What? Actually. Careful, can, little fingers are kid. What? Actually, what? You can actually tell that's on. Uh-huh. Look. Yeah. yeah. Careful now. You can actually tell that it's on. Oh, so you can see it. Yeah, I can. Oh, well, that's... Man. I don't know how I could have done this without your assistance. No, either. I was lost until you came into the scene. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Well, you know what? Now there's some outdoor work that Emmy's gonna do. Grandma's out digging in the dirt, sifting out rocks and worms, and Emmy can't wait to get her fingers dirty. Right, buddy? No, thanks. Well, you're not gonna sit in here and veg out, I'll tell you that. Oh. Chop, chop, mush, hit it. I'm helping too. <laughs> I don't think so. We'll I see you guys. What did I tell ya? Sifting dirt, rocks, and worms. Mush! I'm glad to help. Work harder! I will throw this at you. <laughs>